Good afternoon. Welcome to the unofficial ACI guide. My name is Jody. We'll be looking today using Postman and Runner to configure static path bindings and fabric access policies for bare metal servers. In this particular use case, what we're looking at is maybe we're looking to onboard four new servers that are bare metal into ACI. Each of those servers are going to have two interfaces, an active and a standby, and all eight interfaces from our servers will be plugging into 16 endpoint groups inside of a tenant. Now there are several options that we can use to tackle this use case. One, we could just use the GUI to configure the static path bindings and the uh, associated fabric access policies. I actually went through and timed using the GUI to do this. For just one server with two interfaces, it takes eight minutes and 12 seconds of clicking through the different endpoint groups and the fabric access policies to make that happen. For four servers, you're looking at 30 minutes. So we will not be doing that today. Another option is using a feature called uh, deploying EPGs via the AEP. We're not going to look at that feature. We may look at that later on in a diff different video, but not today. What we're going to look at today is using Postman and Runner to push the configurations of the static path bindings and our fabric access policies and to do that quickly and efficiently. So we're going to have several assumptions from this. Um, we've already created the VLAN pools, the physical domains, the AEPs the switch selectors, the, the interface selectors, those are all there as well. So what Postman and Runner we're using that to do is it's going to create the access port selectors for each of the ports for for our switches under our fabric access policies. So we'll have a port 1 through 4 on switch 1, a port 1 through 4 on switch 2. It will also serve to link up the interface profiles with our interface policy groups that we already have configured. From a tenant perspective, well, number one, we already have a tenant. Uh, we already have a VRF, a bridge domain, and an endpoint group. Postman and Runner is, is just taking the time-consuming process of linking up the static path bindings inside of endpoint groups to the servers. So all of those standby and active interfaces will be attached via Postman and Runner. So before we dive into Postman and Runner, I'd actually like to take you through just a, a dry run of what this is going to look like. Uh, we're using APIC 3.21M. I'm using a simulator here. Uh, and I'm going to poke through the fabric policies just real quick to show you what we have configured and more importantly what I don't have configured. Uh, as I already pointed out in the assumptions, all of our other fabric access policies are configured. What is not configured are the access port selectors under either one of the LEAF interface profiles. And if I go look into the tenant, uh, we have a number, I think 16 different endpoint groups configured, but I don't have any of the static path bindings configured for any of these EPGs. So let's go build some static path bindings. The first thing we're going to have to do is as we get into Postman, I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to log in uh, to the APIC and get a cookie. Um, the username and password and the host name, I'm not hiding these. These are environment variables that you can uh, use inside of Postman to uh, for, for different lab environments or different simulators. You can use different usernames and passwords and host names. So now that we have the login, let's go into Runner. And from Runner, what we're going to do, I'm going to go search for a particular collection that I have. Uh, runner lab add interfaces to EPG is just the name of the collection. That's what I named it. And it's got two separate posts uh, that it's going to go through. The access port selectors will build out the access port selectors in our fabric access policies. And the EPG build post will go through and build the static path bindings for us. First of all, I'm going to specify an environment. Again, I've got several different simulators and labs that, that I have. I, I don't want to send these API calls to the wrong one. So I'm selecting that. Uh, I'm going to go and select a file. Uh, we'll look through this in just a minute. But what this is is a CSV file that has um, has a list of uh, of different information that you might want to put in, in in a variable format. So we've got that. We see that's good. I'm going to go ahead and click Run, and we can see here this is taking off. This takes about uh, 20 seconds to run. And you're seeing we're getting the 200 OKs. If I hop back over to my APIC, you can see right now that all of these static path bindings are being built out. Um, I can actually go down and look at this as well. So 
All of our static path bindings have been built for all of the all 16 endpoint groups at this point. If I go back into the fabric section and look at the interface uh, section, the profiles now have access port selectors underneath both switches. So now that we've seen what Runner and Postman can do uh, by installing all the static path bindings and the uh, access port selectors, we're going to look and deep, uh, dive deep into uh, Postman and Runner itself. So if you don't have Postman, uh, go to www.getpostman.com and download it. That's the first step. It's free. Uh, it's open source API software that's been out there for a number of years. Uh, works great with ACI as well. Looking at Postman itself, um, one thing I wanted to show you and start off was the login that you need first. So the login post is it's just an API post that is sent to a particular URL inside of ACI. Uh, this AAA login.xml if you're using XML or JSON if you're using JSON. Uh, the body of the request is just a username and a password. Uh, the double the brackets with the password, the double brackets with the username and the host name, these are all environmental variables that I'm getting because I have a particular environment set up. Uh, if you don't have environment set up, you could just put the actual IP address of your APIC and the actual username and password of your APIC uh, in this particular body. Next, the for, for creating the, the, the two different posts that we want, uh, first of all, I know that I want to go through and build out selectors for all of the different uh, interfaces uh, that will live under the, the two different switches in ACI, Leaf 201 and Leaf 202. And what you can see here is I've got, uh, again, some more variables in this XML code. And you may be wondering, where in the world do I get this XML code? Well, what you can do, you can go to the APIC itself and you can download this code. So if you, if you highlight, uh, I'm highlighting the LEAF interface profile for LEAF 201. I want to download just the configuration, but I want the entire subtree underneath the LEAF 201 interface profile. And I want, to, I want it to come down as XML. If I go and click that, what happens there is, is we're going to see that the um, I have this infra ACK port P that is the uh, interface profile for Leaf 201 as you can see here and then I've got these uh, access port uh, the the infra H port S which is the access port selector as you can see port 4 port 3 port 2 port 1 you can kind of start to see how this is is constructed uh, you've got um, the association or the pointer to the actual policy group here, uh, 10 gig dash access, that's listed there. And then you've got some infra port blocks, which, is, or, which are basically telling ACI uh, which particular interface uh, this actually is. So interface one, you could see from port one to port one, uh, from port two to port two, port three to port three, so on and so forth. So just by looking at this, uh, once you've configured an ACI and you download it, you can begin to see how this is structured. So in this case, what I did is I replaced the LEAF interface profile. Uh, I, what I did is I said substitute L and then the number. Uh, so L201 is going to show up. For the access port selector, this is going to be port dash and then whatever interface I specify. And uh, you might be wondering, well, how do you get these things? How do, how do we suck this in? So what it does is Runner is going to use a combination of the, the XML or JSON code that you have here plus a CSV file. And it's going to, Runner is going to act like a for loop to go through and uh, look through each of the, the code snippets that you have in Postman and, and fill those out. So you can see here that where I have L and then the double bracket switch, this is corresponding to a column in our CSV file called switch. So if we look at uh, running this essentially in our head, this, this line two, it's going to substitute L switch with L201 or leaf 201 for our interface profile. For our access port selector, it's going to, the name will be port dash and the interface number that's specified in the interface column. A nice thing about it is I have went through 
uh, where our blocks, our interface blocks are set up and I have inserted that, that appropriate uh, number, reuse that same variable over and over and over. So I, I, I could have created these as completely new things, but I didn't, I, I was able to reuse that. And then for the final thing that we're grabbing from the CSV file is the policy group. Uh, and if, as you can see on, on the CSV file here, I'm using the same access, the 10 gig access policy group throughout the entire thing. Um, I chose to variableize it just to show that we could have different policy groups if you chose to. From the EPG build perspective, uh, again, we're posting this to a particular um, URL for the APIC. And inside of the body of the code, I'm telling it, you've got to start out with tenant, which is the highest level object then the application profile, which is runner. Then we need to go into each endpoint group uh, before we do the static path binding. So in order to go into multiple endpoint groups, uh, what I did is I'm telling the script or I'm telling runner to look at the EPG name, which is EPG 101. And if it's EPG 101, I want it to make sure that we have the correct end cap, which is 1100. Uh, the tagging type, which is regular or trunked. Uh, and then the path. So this is pod one switch uh, 201 and interface one in this example. And then again, for every line in the code, it's gonna go through both of these collections and replace the variables with the data in the CSV file. So let's go hop into runner. So when runner comes up, if you can remember, the name of our collection was runner add interfaces. And just by typing a couple of letters, it automatically gives me a couple of options. Uh, I select the runner lab add interfaces to EPG collection, and I see both of those posts uh, that we were just looking at. Uh, if you don't have an environment, you don't select it. If you do have an environment, then go, go find the, the environment that, that you need. Uh, we're going to select the data file, which happens to be runner lab interfaces. And it's always a good idea just to preview that, just to make sure that you've got the, the right data. And as you can probably tell, this is the exact data we were looking at on that spreadsheet previously. We can click the run, runner lab, and right away we're going to see that we're getting the 403 code, which is forbidden. And in that case, what, what is happening is we haven't, or the cookie that we had previously has expired. So what we're going to have to do is go into Postman, find our login, send it, and get the 200 OK. And then we can go back into, uh, into Runner and try that again. And now you can see we're getting 200 OKs everywhere. So those, uh, those interfaces are, are being re-pushed out uh, to the APIC at this point. So if we hop over to the APIC, we can see all these guys have been populated. Um, one thing that, that I always do when I'm, when I'm using Postman and Runner is that if I have a post to create something, I go ahead and create the inverse post to delete it. So um, in that case, I actually do have that. Um, the runner delete interfaces, which is basically the access port selector where I'm going through and I'm not deleting my interface profile for Leaf 201. I'm just deleting any particular access port selector under the Leaf that is present in the CSV file. And for the EPG, I'm just going through and deleting the static path binding under any EPG that lives in that CSV file. So just keep in mind that it, it's going to go through and iterate over whatever you have in that CSV file, right? So let's go back into Postman, and I will show that to you briefly where we delete the stuff. Okay, we've got the right thing selected. Let's make sure we've got the right file, and we do, because I'm just going to use the same CSV file, because it's just holding those variables. I'll go through and start deleting that, and you can see that it's running. If we hop back over into the APIC real quick, we can see uh, the, uh, the access port selectors are being deleted at this point. So um, that, that really kind of concludes the, the video. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to highlight uh, that I probably should have highlighted earlier 
is when you are using Postman and Runner, really any APIs, it's very important that you don't do this in production. Uh, always use a simulator or a lab environment uh, to, to kind of play with this. So I hope this has been helpful, and we'll see you next time on unofficialacaguide.com. For more videos and other design guides, best practices, and other great documents, please visit us on the web at unofficialacaguide.com or on YouTube.